I wanted to just give you a few tips around working with color and applying color in Illustrator just because I use this stuff all the time and why not. I've got a shape here and this is actually part of a group. If I click on it, you're going to see that it says group right there. Now a lot of times I want to be able to edit the color or some property, some appearance property of, a, of a, one of the features or one of the, the individual objects within that group. An easy way to do that is to double click and then go in and start to select and look, I still have a group, I'll double click again, click on the object, there's the path. Finally, I can see the color right there. Another way to do this, let me double click away, is to use the direct selection tool. So if I press the letter A to go to direct selection and click on one of the paths, I can dive into part of a group there, usually this works pretty well, and I can select the path. Now if you look up here, you're going to see the color of the path right there. There's the fill. 50 ways to apply color in Illustrator, right? Well, if I come up here, I can see all the swatches. That's awesome. But you can also use what's called an alternate UI. If I shift click up here, you're going to see that we can switch to the color panel. That's pretty cool. You can also, if you want to, if you have a series of colors, for instance, and you want to change this overall, you can hold down the shift key. This works in the color panel as well to change the uh, overall shade if you want, like the tint, if you will, to make it lighter or darker, essentially. Okay, there we go. Nice. Another thing that I tend to do is once I have these panels open, I'll press the escape key because that way it hides them. You don't have to click somewhere to get rid of it. Something else I love to do is if I'm, let's say I'm about to draw another shape. I'm going to go to the rectangle tool here and click on the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw another one. But the problem is I'm going to use the last appearance from the last selected shape, right? Which is going to be like a brown fill and no stroke. A lot of times what I do is I want to draw with black and white or something like that. If you press the letter D right now, now I got to make sure that I don't have anything selected. So I'm going to undo that. I do this all the time. I'll go to select, deselect or select however you do it. Press the letter D. D actually sets the default stroke and fill. That means a white fill with a black stroke. If you look, you're going to see down here in the tools panel and up here in the control panel. Now another thing that I tend to do a lot is suppose that I draw a shape. I'm going to draw a shape right now. Just really simple. It's on top of these. That's great. What if I don't want to fill? Or what if I don't want to stroke? Well, using shortcuts, you can do that. If you look over here in the tools panel, you'll see I have the fill selected right now. You can actually swap the two or switch between the two by hitting the letter X. Look down there. You're going to see that they change. You have stroke on top, fill on top. You can then, if you want, use the forward slash to remove. That's the question mark on your keyboard or forward slash. So I can actually switch between the two using the letter X and then hit the question mark or forward slash to remove it. I can press D to set default fill and stroke. Anyway, these are just a few little things I wanted to throw out there because I know a lot of us do this a lot, <laughs> but these are things I use all the time. So why not?